Hello, welcome to the Grown Up Church. I'm Patricia Estes, North Palm Church here in Charleston, South Carolina. We are so excited about what God is doing in His people, among His people, and it is just beginning. The kingdom of God is enlarging, and the church is a beautiful church, and she is going to become more beautiful, and she is maturing. Today's topic will be casting out devils, casting out demons. A lot of times we don't even realize that we have not done the work that we needed to do on the earth and that's why evil is continuing. We have to take authority over the demonic realm and you and I have that authority. I would just like to open up by reading a couple scriptures. Matthew 10 verse 8, heal the sick raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, freely you receive, freely give. Mark 16, 17, these signs will accompany those who believed. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. The Bible is very clear that as believers, we have authority to cast out devils. Um, a lot of times I'm wondering in our modern, super developed, what we think is the way to do church is we don't want it to be dirty. We don't want it to be messy. You know, we just don't want to have all these problems, but we cannot see the kingdom progress unless the light it dispels the darkness. And uh, as we're looking around, I see like Pastor Greg Locke, who's got this documentary on come out in Jesus name and mainstream theaters throughout the nation. People are going to this documentary and people who are called to, to, to deliverance are showing up in these theaters. And as people are watching that movie and they come to the end of the movie, they are having demons exercised from their lives. Why? Because that's what God says. We are called to cast out demons. We're called to cast out devils. And that is, in some realms of Christianity, so strange because it's a powerless place to be if we do not have authority over the realm of darkness, over the demonic. I'm just going to share a couple stories of my own journey, and I want to encourage you to remember your journey. I believe God has given you some thoughts. I believe he's given you some ideas. I believe he's given you experiences where you are understanding the power that you must walk in to be successful as the church, as the mature body of believers on the earth. And so I just pulled out a couple things. Here I have one of my Bibles. I have about 15 or 20 Bibles that are like precious to me. And they mark seasons and times in my life. I have my Bible from my, my first Bible from my childhood. I have my dad's Bible um, that I received. I have my Bible that I bought when I went to Lee University and I was at the bookstore. And, you know, this is way before Amazon. And I got to look at all these different Bibles and purchase my first, my first purchased Bible. And then I have uh, one of my Bibles in my wonderful treasured collection is this Bible. I call it my war Bible. It's where I really learned to do warfare was with this Bible. And I have so many things marked. The pages are falling out. And it's where I learned in this Bible about the authority of God. It was the season that I was using this Bible that I was, God, Holy Spirit led me into learning about spiritual warfare and about what God was doing and how to participate with him, how to join with him, how to, how to understand, to walk in the authority that God had given. And so this is a very special Bible. And there are still warfare seasons where I know it's like, you walk in different seasons in the kingdom, and there are sometimes, we always put on the armor of God, but there are sometimes you know you're going into war. It's a time to take territory. It's a time to come against the enemy's attack. You know it is a season of war. 
And when I know that, I go and get this Bible. It's falling apart, but it means something. It records the victories. It records the fights in this Bible. And I remember it and just encourages me to move forward. Along with that, I always have these journals that I've kept. And this one is definitely falling apart as well. And I have all my notes about deliverance in this. This is dated February 1993. Some of you were just born. You were babies at that time. But here I was learning spiritual warfare in 1993. And that's when this was. And um, I had this guide of deliverance and how to cast out devils. And I was learning all of this stuff. But until you participate, you really don't know. And so I can, I have many different stories. I want to give you this one story, this one experience that I had. And, um, it was one Saturday morning. I had gotten up early. I was preparing, praying, knowing that I was going to speak at a conference, a ladies conference actually at the church. And when I got there very early, the ladies had already had breakfast. I was coming in after breakfast because I was having the first session and I just wanted to come straight in prepared, ready for that session. And as I entered a little bit early, uh, I was met by some staff and, and they said, um, there's a gentleman here that says he has an appointment to see you. Well, I knew I hadn't made an appointment to see anyone. I was there to speak for a ladies' conference. And so um, I said, well, could we rearrange? I don't really have an appointment to meet him. And they said, no, he's pretty insistent. So I asked one of our assistants, uh, pastors, to come in with me. And we went into the conference room with this young man. He was probably late 20s, early 30s, kind of a built guy, had on a leather jacket because it was cold outside, cool outside. And we sat down at the conference table and began to converse. And I said, so I understand that you have a meeting with me. And could you explain that? And he said, yes. He said, the lions that came out of the trash can told me I needed to come see you. Well, you know, right there, that introduction told me I was dealing with something a little different than the normal. I said, oh, the lions that came out of the trash can. And he said, yes. And I said, okay. And they gave you my name and told you where to come. And he said, yes. And so I told him, okay, well, I am going to speak at this conference. I'm not going to be able to have this meeting at this moment, but I would love to pray with you later. Let's set this up for this coming week. I stood up, went around the table. Now the table, conference table was a long conference table, solid wood, weighed over 14, 400 pounds, over 400 pounds. And we're there and, and the lady that was with me, I asked her to kind of stand behind him as well. And I, I went to pray for him. And when I placed my hand on his back, it was so hot, it was burning. I had to remove my hand a little bit from touching his back. And as I began to understand that this young man was coming here for help because he needed deliverance, and as I began to pray, he took one hand, defying the law of physics, and he hit the edge of that table, and that entire table, 400 pounds, went flying in the air, up and hit the ceiling, fell on some chairs, it's, it's landed sideways, and I knew then that this was not a physical battle, but a spiritual battle. And so um, we bound that spirit, we cast that spirit out, and he was set free at that moment. Now, as we were following up, found out that he was uh, an officer on from the Air Force Base that was located near us, that he had no recollection of about three days. And um, he was coming there for help. Now, I don't know the lions that came out of the trash can. But I know the great love of God, the lion of the tribe of Judah, and that he is directing, he wants to see his people set free. 
Later on, I received a phone call. His parents were actually ambassadors for the United States, stationed and ambassadors to one of the nations in South America at that time. And they called me and they said, can you give us any insight to what happened to our son? And I just want to tell you that as a a people, as a church, we have to become these beacons of hope that we can see people set free. There are some wonderful Christian counseling and there's inner healing and things that God has given us. There are great tools in our toolbox, but one of our tools must be deliverance. We must be able to cast out devils. And on a regular basis, sometimes we'll walk into places and people will just respond in certain ways because the demonic is provoked. You can see in some of our cities where there's demonic that's provoked. And yes, people are trapped. They're being oppressed and possessed. And who can help them? We cannot counsel out a demon. We cannot just say, I want to teach out this demon. We can't hug out the demon. We have to cast out the demon. And you and I, we are the church. We're the mature church. We are the prepared church. And I'm seeing a need across the United States of America and the nations of the world for the church to remember what we are. We are a powerful extension of heaven. We are those that represent the greatest king, the greatest the greatest lover, the greatest governor, the greatest one that set the captives free. And so I just want to share with you that there are people that will come and they are so bound. They want freedom, but they don't know how to get it. We can't give them the 10 steps. We can't say, here's a good how-to book. We can't just clap their way and jump their way to victory. We need to lay hands on them and cast out devils. We need to be able to speak to demonic spirits and we need to see people set free. The harvest that's coming in, I'm really speaking to this mature church that I see out there that's so beautiful. You've been preparing. You've been the bride making yourself ready. They're going to come in so broken, so twisted, Their experiences have invited so many entities, demonic spirits into them that they will not be successful unless they are set free, that they are free from this demonic oppression, possession. And so I just want to tell you that we need to prepare some things We read in the scripture that some only come out by prayer and fasting. We need to fast. The weak, the anemic, the powerless church doesn't have fasting built in. When we're only about our self-absorbed selves and it's all about us, we're not going to be able to cast out devils. Everybody's just not because we say, Lord, Lord, or we've accepted Jesus Christ into our heart and we're a Christian doesn't mean that we're going to have the power to cast out devils. We need to seek God. We need to be full of his spirit. We need to know him. We need to study this. We need to get into the scripture and we have to find out what does it mean to cast out a devil? What are the devils? Where are they? And I know that we're going to see regions, complete regions in the United States set free from demonic oppression because a mature church has grown up A mature church has taken her place and she says, not on my watch. This is not going to happen. And we're going to see family set free. We're going to see dad set free. We're going to see mom set free. We're going to see children set free. And we're going to see the fame of Jesus spread throughout our nation and the nations of the world because These people are going to go back in their sound minds. They're going to go back to their schools. They're going back to their homes. They're going back to their jobs. And they are going to say, I have been set free. 
because Jesus Christ has made a way for me. So I just decree over you, you mature church, that you are not powerless. You are full of power. I decree over you right now that you are coming awake to the awareness of the responsibility to cast out devils to cast out demons, to be powerful, powerful people, to love well by setting the captive free. What I'm hearing the Lord say is, grow up. 